Hi, and welcome to 3dmotive.com. My name is Stephen Jewells, and I'm a senior character artist. In this quick tutorial, we'll take a look at a program called XNormal. This is the interface for XNormal. It's a program that sometimes gives you better AO maps and normal maps than ZBrush uh, and 3D Studio Max and Maya. It just depends. I, I have baked sometimes, I have baked maps in ZBrush why it's not crisp and clear as I need it to be. And I rebake it. I export the high-res high model. I export the low-res version of that, bring it into XNormals, and it works beautifully. Sometimes I get the same problems in Max and Maya. So this XNormals is, is a free program. It's on the internet. Uh, but it's a great little program, and I've rarely gotten any problems with it. So in order to be able to do that, we just need a high-resolution model, we need a low-resolution model, and we need to set up, set up some baking options. It's just that quick and easy. So in this case, with the high-definition, this is the high-res model, all you have to do is right-click, add a mesh, and we can go down and add our high OBJ. The low definition mesh, same thing. Right click, add the mesh, and navigate to where your mesh is. With the high definition mesh, the only thing you really have to do, we do want to do a tangent based, uh, tangent space normal map, so we do want to go ahead and click that. And in the low definition, we do want to make sure that our f maximum frontal ray distance is two. So I'm just going to double click on that and hit two. And I'm going to double click on that one and hit two. All right, pretty simple, pretty easy so far. Let's go to our baking options. Now we can set up our different sizes 16 by 16, 32 by 32, 64, 128, blah, 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 blah. If you do just like say a 128, which is standard for a lot of things, we want to make sure that we're going to. Uh, get the closest hit if the rays, if, if the calculations fail slightly. We want it as close as possible. We want to discard any of the back face hits. Sometimes we have polygons that intersect other things. We want to go ahead and try and discard that. With the edge padding, this is the, the sort of uh, around our UVs uh, for our models. We want to make sure we have a little extra space over the seams because we want it to turn around and and not have those seams showing and by creating an edge padding I usually use it about six it gives you a better uh, a better overlap so you it's it's harder to see where seams are for that with the bucket sizes uh, I try to use just 32 which I think is the default so I'm just going to use that and also I make sure you don't have to change this to anything I use the default bucket re rendering of course, anti-aliasing anti is, you know, how how tight, how clear, uh, and, and how uh, unstepped you want any of the the uh, details to be. Now, I've never had to go more than two times. You can go up to four, but I've never had to go beyond two, so that ten tends to be what I set it at. Over here, you have a couple different things. You have uh, obviously the normal map, height map. You can base, uh, you can bake uh, diffuse maps out of this thing, ambient occlusion, normal maps, etc. Okay, you got a long list of things: cavity map, uh, blah blah blah, radiosity. The one thing you have to pay attention to is you have to understand, like, what program are you using? If you're using, uh, we're gonna do a normal map, but if you're using Maya, you don't have to change anything. But if you're using Max, you have to click this little box here. And you have to make sure that the the tangent space, you have to make sure that the Y is positive. The X is negative. Okay? That's the only thing you have to change and adjust. In this case, we're going to bake the normal map and an occlusion, occlusion map, and that's it. So the easy way to do that, we've, we've set that up. We've set that up. Let's just go ahead and click that little box there so we can set up. Uh, I'm just going to create a maps folder. Okay, and I'm going to leave this back here as this. I'm going to go ahead and call this orc body and just to go ahead and hit save. All right, so that's basically it. So let's go ahead and just click this generate maps. Okay, 
So what it's going to do first is, what it should do first is render our normal map. So we're just going to go ahead and give it a little time. Renders it pretty quickly. Okay, as you can see, it rendered it very fast, in just a few seconds. Now this is this is an orc that I that was extremely low polygon. It had a whole bunch of armor and everything else. That's that's this space over here that is not filled. It is actually filled on the diffuse texture, but I, it didn't have that for this. I had just the body and the head that goes with this. So that's all the features you're seeing here. This is his chest, arm, and his back. There's his head right here. And now it's going to go ahead and look to create our uh, ambient occlusion. So let's go ahead and let it think. And there we go. There's our AO map. Perfect. Nice, clean, works great. Okay. Okay, in Photoshop, all I have to do, I'm just going to double click in the, the background and I'm going to grab these two pieces. there you go it's really nice very clean you can see here's the orc nose his eyebrow this actually shoots towards the interior of his mouth here's his ears uh, this, these are the pants he was wearing chest here's his arm and actually here's the front of the arm goes to the back of the arm and his back there's one little error here I think it was actually in the original mesh easy to fix of course you can just do a quick blend out in Photoshop. No biggie. All right. There's the hands. Uh, there's a there's a space here because it actually has this this leather that covers the back of his hand, and that's a separate piece. All right. So let's take a look at the normals, and they're perfect. They're what they should be. Again, we have that one slight little error, so we're gonna do a quick fix on that. Let's go ahead and scale down. I'm using my brackets key to scale the size of the brush up and down. Oops, Control Z. Sorry, I was on the paintbrush. Let's get for the little smear. I'm gonna go back and forth on this one. There we go. Instantly fixed. But again, you can see this is uh, the face. This is how it turned out. Very nice, very simple. Okay, and I think that looks really good. I think that that'll work for what we need. Okay, same with this. I think we did a quick little fix, and I think that'll work just fine. Let's go ahead and take a quick gander in um, uh, Marmoset Tool Bag. If we take a quick look at the model, this is this is what we had. This was a low res model with the the. Um, Inclusion map and the normal map. What I actually did was just applied it really quickly. I put in the diffuse map, put, uh, put the occlusion map in the diffuse, I put the normal map here. I obviously technically should have just put the occlusion map here, but I wanted to get a little, a little something in there so we could see it a little bit easier. But as you can see, it worked just fine. It worked really nicely. Uh, of course, we can adjust lights and things like that, but we're not going to do this in, in Marmos at this point. We just want to make sure we can see what it looked like and that it worked. So, uh, again, X Normals, it was just a very quick, uh, easy program to use. Quick couple quick button clicks, and boom, done. Anyway, uh, this has been Stephen G. Wells for 3dmotive.com. I hope you guys enjoyed this.